News with Brian Willett, meteorologist Craig Flint, and Mike Finner with sports. You're watching Fox 66 News, first at 10. A Sunday afternoon deer versus motorcycle accident sending one woman to the hospital. Good evening, I'm Brian Wilk. A woman was sent to the hospital after striking a deer with her motorcycle. Now, according to police, this happened shortly after 1 p.m. today at the intersection of Walton Woods Road and East Lake Road. The deer jumped in front of her bike, throwing her onto the roadway. Portions of East Lake Road were closed for a short time. The female was transported to UPMC Hammett, and her condition is still not known. And to weather now, meteorologist Craig Flint has your Fox first forecast. Craig. All righty, Brian. Uh, I'm just loading my computer up here, so hopefully you can see. Yeah, there we go. We can see the quick fill camera, and it's still kind of a uh, drizzly night. Some light rain moving on through. So let's uh, talk about what's going on right now uh, with Storm Tracker. We'll show you, again, uh, just some patchy drizzle. Little light rain coming through. That'll be around through about midnight. Should start to taper uh, afterwards. 68 right now. Winds still perky from the southwest at 10. Those will also ease. Dew point down to 64 as we take you through the rest of the night. Scattered showers. Temperatures upper 60s near 70 midnight. Falling into the mid 60s with a little shy sun early. Murky, kind of humid again tomorrow. Scattered showers and thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. We'll talk more about the forecast coming up in just a bit. Brian. Thank you, Craig. And the Pennsylvania Department of Health has reported another increase of COVID-19 cases in Erie County. 13 new cases in Erie County bring the total number of cases to 967 and a total of 18 deaths. In neighboring counties, Crawford County is reporting 127 cases with an increase of one new case. Warren County continues to report 18 cases uh, with two new cases today. Chautauqua County, New York reporting 233 and Ashtabula County, Ohio is reporting 537 total cases. And throughout the state, the Pennsylvania Department of Health reporting today 654 additional positive cases. Now that brings the total to over 113,000 and there were five new deaths reported today bringing that total to 7,209. And the U.S. continues to report more COVID-19 cases and deaths than any other country. Now that's according to new numbers out Sunday from Johns Hopkins University. This comes as the White House Coronavirus Task Force coordinator warns the U.S. warns the U.S. in a new phase of the pandemic. Meredith Wood has the story. A new phase in the fight against coronavirus. Dr. Deborah Burks offering a dire new view on America's battle against the pandemic. What we're seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. It's into the rural as equal urban areas. Dr. Burks's bleak outlook comes as the U.S. continues to report more cases and more deaths from coronavirus than any other country. According to the latest data from Johns Hopkins University, there are more than 4.6 million COVID-19 cases in the U.S. and more than 154,000 Americans have died from the virus. Meanwhile, a forecast published by the CDC projects the death toll could climb to 173,000 by August 22nd. It's very frustrating as an epidemiologist to see these case numbers continuing to rise without a, la without a national strategy, without adequate testing, uh, without contact tracing as we need it. Um, all of the things that we've been talking about for months and months. And these numbers are going to continue to go up until we do have these things in place. Dr. Burke says there are 20 states that she's watching very closely and that each state must tailor its response to mitigate cases. It's not super spreading individuals, it's super spreading events and we need to stop those. We definitely need to take more precautions. Meredith Wood, Fox 66 News. And the new school year has already begun for some students, but millions more will head back to the classroom in the coming weeks. Now, this device may burn away all fears about returning to the classroom. It is armed with powerful UBC UVC lights. It's fully high tech with an internal GPS system and sensors to move around any object. And it can be programmed and monitored remotely by laptop, 
tablet, or smartphone. You could do two cafeterias and two gymnasiums in four hours, which would take a lot longer if you were using manpower. And a cabinet version has been created for books, tablets, and toys. And the company says several local school districts are considering the robot for their schools. And Fox 66 News is your local election headquarters. Now one political party wants to be on your presidential ballot in November. Dr. Joe Jorgensen is running for the Libertarian ticket and was in town this morning. Chelsea Swift was there and has our report. Libertarian presidential candidate Dr. Joe Jorgensen is doing a tour to meet potential voters and collect signatures to be on the presidential ballot. At her stop in Erie, she emphasized bringing home troops from overseas. There's no reason why we need to be in 150 different countries to protect the borders of America. So we need to protect our borders and again, become one giant Switzerland, armed and neutral. In addition to bringing home troops, Dr. Joe Jorgensen's platform addressing ballot access laws that prevent third parties from competing fairly. She says Pennsylvania is one of those states. Pennsylvania is very important because of ballot access. The larger, older parties are trying to shut us up because they know that we're the real alternative or the real choice. So we're going to as many major cities as we can in Pennsylvania to get the word out. One local supporter saying he appreciates presidential candidate Dr. Joe Jorgensen's dedication to visiting small cities across America. Starting with this grassroots local base is really going to help us reach out and, you know, connect with people who de feel disenfranchised. I think it's really critical that she gets out, especially on these local levels. And another surgery, supporter saying he feels Jorgensen represents the people instead like of corporations. She's here willing to meet with these people, willing to meet us and talk to us and explain what she's going through. And it, it makes her more of a human candidate and more of a candidate for the people, not for corporations. Chelsea Swift, Fox 66 News. Do you have a question for U.S. Representative Mike Kelly as he runs for re-election in November? Well, you have a chance Monday when he hosts a live telephone town hall meeting for residents of the 16th Congressional District in Pennsylvania. Now, Kelly will be talking about economic relief and tax return processing. Now, the meeting will begin at 4 p.m., and you can log on to our website to find out how you can chat with a Republican representative. And for all your latest election news, head to our website, yourerie.com. And one local woman will be putting her name in the record books. 25-year-old Mercyhurst grad Tony Kramer set the record for the most burpees in 24 hours by a female, doing nearly 6,000, and the previous record is 5,555. Now, I had a chance to talk with her and congratulate her over Zoom this afternoon. Tony started at 5.36 a.m. August 1st and did her last burpee at 3.47 a.m. August 2nd. Now, a burpee is a push-up followed by a leap in the air. Tony says she credits her inspiration to retired Navy SEAL David Goggins. You know, he's done a ton of work to fundraise for like families that um, maybe a spouse or a parent doesn't come home type of a thing, and he did it through ultra marathons and like he started out as not a healthy individual, but his motto was do something that makes you uncomfortable every day. She wanted to see how she would do in a tough situation. Everyone was like, "Why would you do this? Like, what's the point?" And I was like, "Well, why not?" Like. <laughs> I mean, to truly find out what you're capable of and to truly know yourself, I think you have to put yourself in those situations where it's kind of like you and yourself in the pain cave, and then that's when you find out who you really are. Tony says she started at a fast pace. She was hoping to be done in 12 to 17 hours, but after a few hours, fatigue set in. She slowed down, taking more breaks, and her neck was getting tight. And her knees started to hurt from hitting the ground so much. You have to submit evidence to Guinness to prove your achievement. She had a camera to her side and one in the front recording her. A historic splashdown decades in the making. I'm Phil Keating in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The latest on the safe return of our American astronauts coming up. Plus, patio pups. We'll take you to one restaurant where folks could bring their four-legged friends to join them for lunch. And later, Gator. 
This little guy taking a break from the hot Alabama sun to chill at the pool. See news happening? Shoot it. 